And Jen, there was a, a, a nice abstract at this last ASCO from, from, the, from the Duke group that talked about how the community experience with kidney cancer may be a little bit different than the academic center. The patients may be having more, more comorbid disease, performance status may be not as optimal as those that come to a center for clinical trials. So not everybody that comes to see us has a good risk factor disease. How do you think about the frontline therapy in patients that might have comorbidities, uh, intermediate or poor risk factors, and other opportunities for those patients that may not be just TKI? Well, I think the poor risk patients, when we tried to do that prospectively, were harder to find than we thought. And part of that is that as the disease progresses, some of the clinical features that make a person poor risk develop, but they're not necessarily the up for, they're up front. But there are a group of patients that come initially as their initial treatment that have symptoms, that have the perineoplastic syndromes with fever, night sweats, anemia. And those people do poorly, unfortunately, no matter what we try to do. Our data from the temsorolimus uh, upfront first-line therapy versus interferon showed that they did better with temsorolimus than with interferon. Um, and I do think that there are patients with some of the perineoplastic syndromes who respond better to an mTOR inhibitor than they even do to a TKI, or even might be a candidate for chemotherapy if they have very rapidly progressive disease with a lot of cells in mitosis, like a sarcomatoid dominant patient or even a medullary patient. But, but again, that's all relative speaking because we don't really get them into a different category by treatment most of the time. So, how do, so, so I, I, I hear from you that you think there still is a role for temsorolimus and, and otherwise you know, poor prognosis metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Um, do you think those patients can also be treated with a, a TKI? Is there, is there a difference? Is it pretty much the same? What are your thoughts? I, I think that they can be, but um, and I think you, it's kind of flip a coin, you know, you'll treat them with a TKI or you'll treat them with an mTOR and you'll see if it works. And I've clearly had people who blew right through sunitinib or pazopinib and responded to temsorolimus. So, and I think we all have. There are people that are not just driven by VEGF. So I think the, the key message there is to not forget that mTOR inhibition and in an otherwise poorer prognosis patient with newly diagnosed metastatic disease is an appropriate choice. Danny, I want to I want to ask you about um, some subpopulations in kidney cancer before we get to non-clear cell people that present with brain metastases, uh, people who are not classically participating in the you know, the pivotal TKI trials. Mm -hmm. How do you approach those patients? Yeah, so out in the community, uh, things are a little bit different than in clinical trials. So for example, uh, we, uh, the IMDC, the International MRCC Database Consortium, looked at patients that weren't eligible for trials based on inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. And they, they actually have a 1.55 times risk uh, higher of death compared to people involved in clinical trials. So there are more poor risk patients patients out there, and I think the choice between um, uh, a TKI and temsorolimus, uh, it is sort of a flip of a coin, whatever is easiest for a patient, oral therapy versus IV therapy. Um, but if a patient is very, very sick, sometimes temsorolimus is a lot better tolerated. Um, but that being said, you can start with a dose reduction of a TKI as well, so it's hard to know exactly what to do. There are other populations as well, so for example, brain metastases patients, so we shouldn't send those people straight to palliative care. There's definitely a role for treatment for those people, especially if there are, um, uh, if there's a metastasis that could be resected or dealt with using stereotactic radiosurgery, um, and then we can use TKI's uh, targeted therapy uh, to control the rest of their disease. We found that if you do control the brain metastasis well with localized treatment like SRS or, or surgery, that you could actually afford very similar progression-free survivals and overall survivals with TKIs for the rest of their disease. Brian, one of the questions that I'm often...